Hey, what's up everybody? Your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge here on YouTube, the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. I know 2021, even 2020, was kind of a down year content-wise for the channel. So in the spirit of trying to get back in the habit for the new year, I thought I'd get into some simple content for you guys. Might not be the most popular thing on the channel, but I want to get into the routine of talking about the digital media exclusive match as well as the uh, BTI match. So I don't typically watch before the impact because I don't have any interest in 95% of that show, but the uh, the match itself, I will uh, start checking out and talking about. So we're going to start with this one right here. This is uh, Brian Myers versus uh, John Schuyler. And um, I, I'm not just going to, I'm not going to so much re review the matches. I'm surely not going to review it hold for hold or anything like that. But we're going to look at the the wrestlers involved in these matches, the wrestlers featured, and look at their current status and impact and, and their uh, their place on the card and things of that nature. So if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Be very helpful. And uh, leave any thoughts in the comments about this match so that you guys are able to have uh, some dialogue and conversation about it. Because if you look at the actual comments on the Impact Wrestling YouTube channel for this match. Uh, there's there's nothing there that you can build any kind of realistic conversation from. I think one comment says Brock uh, something about the Beast Brock Lesnar. It's a one-line comment saying, you know, the Beast is Brock Lesnar or something some something nonsensical like that. So uh, this will be an opportunity for you guys to, to converse about this. So anyway, let's talk about this uh, this match and the two people involved. So we're going to just start here with, with Brian Myers. I've said many times that he's currently one of my favorite people in the company. I think the learning tree, learning tree, excuse me, has lost a lot of steam since moving on from the Sam Beal thing, because I thought he was perfect for that group. I thought he was perfect in that role. And now they're treading water a little bit when they were, they were getting entertaining. And then Brian Myers obviously hasn't been on TV in quite some time. He did get a world title opportunity release uh, recently. Maybe at No Surrender. Maybe that was a show. I don't remember exactly. But I think everything he's done in Impact so far has been pretty good. I know with TW, he sees him as, you know, Kurt Hawkins. I, I don't see him that way. No, you know what? I got him confused with Cardona. He actually likes Kurt Hawkins. Uh, excuse me, Brian Myers. I think Brian Myers is doing a good job in in shedding a lot of that former image about him. I think he's good in the ring. I think he's funny. And it works. Everything he does works for me. But as I said, I think the learning tree lost a little bit of steam uh, because they got away from uh, Sam Beal too quick, in my opinion. There was really no need for it. They, It's like they did it just to do it. I don't really understand. Uh, now let's talk John Schuyler. I've said before that I think they have something here. Uh, I've seen a little bit of his indie work. Uh, I've seen him do some AEW Dark stuff. And um, I do think they have something in this guy. He had that little program with Laredo Kid that was entertaining. But when he grabbed the microphone previous to one of his matches and he was uh, cutting a promo... He was getting a, re a pretty good reaction from the people, you know, uh, and even during the match as well, he was playing up to the audience very well. Like he comes off super TV ready for a guy that I, I think has pretty limited experience with TV, but he comes off really TV ready to me. I don't know if he is in the same relationship that I know he had been on, been in for a while uh, because uh, the young lady... I don't know if they're still dating or they were, but she's gone a little bit radio silent on social media or she's pulled back quite a bit. Um, but if they are together, I would I would love to see her in a ma managerial role for him. I really think she could have a uh, Scarlet Bordeaux type effect on on him. Uh, you know, we'll see if that's what happens. But I but I do think with um, with John Scott, I think they got something. Uh, so I'm interested to see what he can do when he's featured on Impact a little bit better. Right now, it's just digital media stuff, and I think he's capable of a lot more. And Brian Myers is definitely capable of a lot more. 
So let's talk about this match here. So this is at Lariato Pro, which is the, I believe, the developmental, excuse me, the independent company that uh, Doc Gallows runs. Now, Doc Gallows tweeted out that this is, you know, Lariato Pro is Impact Wrestling's developmental territory. So let's let's address that for a second. The good bro- when it comes to the Good Brothers, as Impact fans, our gut tells us and the eyeball test tells us that when that co- those contracts run up in the summer, they're they're gone. That's that's what we people tend to feel. So for him to say this is the developmental territory for Impact would would say that you know there's a long-term marriage between the two sides and I don't think there is so I don't think that's a a good look also impact has never officially said anything that this is our developmental territory if it actually is then there's some some pretty poor branding going on here uh, <laughs> because I think uh if someone if some independent company really did become a developmental territory I think Impact fans, the diehard fans, will be all over it. You know, they'd, they'd be watching their shows. You know, they might be on YouTube or it might be matches or, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? But I think they would follow them a lot closer. So it almost feels like just something Doc Gallows said just to say it. I could be totally wrong on that. But watching this product itself, you know, when I hear developmental, I feel like they're saying, hey, we're, gonna, we're develop, developing wrestlers, referees, announcers. Uh, all the, all those things. When I see this product that we saw, so this was very similar to the old Twitch stuff where they used to just, you know, do programs with independent companies and then put it on Twitch and it was their show. Th- that's how this was. This was in a, you know, a high school gym, it, it appeared, which is fine. So I've been to many good shows and gyms, uh, so I don't, really knock the venue for something like this. You know, it's, it's an independent show. It's whatever. It's all good. But I look at this and I'm thinking, okay, this is the developmental territory. There's a ring announcer who sounded pretty good. I mean, I would love for them to get off Dave Penzer. I've, I haven't been shy about that. This guy sounded pretty good. He looked like, you know, Bastion Booger from WWF early 90s. Um, the referee, he, he resembled my Uncle Hector. And the announcers were not good. The play-by-play guy wasn't too bad. The the guy on color was a, at least three times as loud as the guy on play-by-play, which also almost made the match unwatchable. He was yelling the whole time. He sounded like he was a knockoff of Jim Cornette. Uh, that's how it, how it came off. So um, I will say, as far as how it looked and felt, I mean, you know, and how it sounded, uh, not great. The camera work was actually pretty decent, you know, for, for something just being shot at an independent show. I thought they did a good job. And, uh, you know, again, it seemed like there was a lot of, um, you know, children in the crowd. So I wasn't under the impression this was really like a developmental territory. I think it was just an independent show that Doc Ellis chose to church it up that way. Anyway, the match itself, this was a long match. This was pretty long. It was like a 20-minute match. Now, when it seems with with this digital media, these exclusive matches, they seem to be sub-six minutes, which tells me Impact has probably looked at some of their YouTube numbers and their watch time of their videos and say, okay, this is is the uh, amount of time that we feel we can keep a, a viewer hooked for, for the entire thing. So that's where I think the the quick matches come from because I don't think people mind watching a, I mean, I don't think, yeah, I don't think they mind watching a whole match. I don't think they want to watch 20 minute matches though on YouTube for, for these kind of matches that don't mean anything. Uh, so that's why this one was different. It was, uh, it was clearly not designed for, uh, the, the digital media exclusive initially, but it was a long match. Uh, John Schuyler is a world champion for Lariato Pro. So we got a chance to see him in a championship role. And we got a chance to see Brian Myers in a babyface role, which is not normally what he does, right? I mean, he's a very clear-cut heel in Impact. He was a 
baby face for this. So it was, it was different. It was interesting, different and interesting. Uh, but the match was, it was laid out well. I think both guys did a very good job. Um, it, again, it was a little hard to watch because of the commentary. Uh, I mean, this guy, this color guy was just screaming the entire time. But, you know, going back to the camera work, it was good. It was solid. Uh, you could hear the people in the crowd from what we saw. didn't didn't Because uh, there was bleachers behind him. There was not a whole lot of people on that side. Uh, but you could hear the people. The people that were there, they were engaged in the match. They were into it. They were into Skyler and Myers. So, you know, that's what you all you can ask for at the end of the day when it comes to a crowd, when it comes to an audience. So Brian Myers um, initially had looked like he won the match. Um, he hit, that he speared the referee, took him out. Other referee came. And... Uh, you know, at one point, Brian Myers hit a DDT that was supposed to finish the match, and then he hit a spear. You guys know how I feel about the DDT and spear finishers. They're overused. Uh, multiple people in Impact use those finishers. They, Those are just moves that mean nothing to me at this point. And they were the moves used to, you know, in a sense, finish the match here. But Brian Myers initially won, initially had his hand held because a new referee ran down. And then uh, the referee reversed the decision because Brian Myers had speared him. So John Schuyler was still the champion. So again, we get to see Schuyler kind of in a champion's role here. You know, could he be, you know, they've kind of teased that he's a player in this digital media championship thing. Uh, like, he, like, you know, he's had a couple opportunities. So he could be someone that actually holds this thing down the line. And the title doesn't mean a whole lot, but I think it's a good start. You know, when you're working your way up the up the chain, you want to work up to the X Division Championship and eventually the world title. Like, the DMC title is a good place to start. But it's kind of clear that with these exclusive matches, we're not just going to get a match from the Impact Zone every time. They're going to grab something from the Indies, you know, church it up and present it to us. So in, in that case, we're going to get some longer matches, obviously. I mean, this got longer than anything we would see on TV. It got it, it was like a pay-per-view match as far as how long it was. You know, so it's probably a little much for some people uh, and a little much for people who have been used to just seeing the four-minute matches that they've been putting on previously. So not bad. Um, it, was, it was, you know, fairly enjoyable, all things said. These are two guys that I have enjoyed watching so far. And I uh, can't wait to see what match they bless us with next week. So, of course, leave your thoughts in the comments regarding this. I am your boy, BQ. Thanks for listening. I'm out. Peace.